What's up guys? Welcome back to Skip's Guns. So what we have here is a Staccato P and an Atlas Nix, and then we have a DSC Gunworks Custom 2011 with Chili parts and the majority of stuff is Atlas parts. So I figured it would be a great example to use to show you older parts that Atlas used to have because they used to use, I'm pretty sure, Chili frames, and I know for a fact they actually used the Chili stainless steel and aluminum grips. And this is an uh, Atlas Magwell, as well as an Atlas sight block, as well as an Atlas um, rear plate system, as well as an Atlas trigger and EGW internals, which is what the Atlas uses still to this day. So let's dive into this. First things first, nice introduction here. This is the Staccato P. Uh, we are going to be doing another video on this. You can tell it looks a little bit different. I have just received it back from Williams Gunworks and he has made this thing into a beauty. I asked him to PVD coat the barrel and then the thumb safeties, the grip safety, as well as the slide takedown. And then I'm running a Atlas short chewed Gebert trigger. I used to have the silver medium trigger, but right now it is in silver. So I figured the red would go better because I'm going to run it with the red Terran tactical base plate. Um, and then thanks to Streamlight, we have a TLR1 and then a Delta Point Pro on there. So here we have an Atlas. It's a NYX. This is their carry gun. We Just for having it on there, we have a PL Pro Valkyrie Olight. We have a Trijicon RMR. Then we have everything Atlas, including Atlas's awesome grips with their removable palm swells, as well as their uh, carry version of a magwell. So let's dive in and see what the differences are. So I'm gonna move this to the side because we don't really need it over here for right now, but we'll start at the front of the gun. And even though this is a little bit different because this gun, like I said, is modified, let's start with the barrels. Now. Usually, if you get a Staccato P, this barrel is going to stick out just a little bit, not flush like that. And on the Atlas, it is completely flush. Now, here I have a, I have a flush cut barrel with a 10 degree crown cut on this barrel. And that actually aids in one looks two in performance with accuracy on an atlas it's a flush cut with a 30 degree crown not only does it just look mean but it also helps with accuracy this is the most accurate gun i've ever shot my wife makes fun of me because i say that on every gun but i honestly mean it with this guy so another thing up front is going to be the dust covers if you see here the Atlas has a full frame dust cover and the Staccato does not. It stops back a little bit here. More of a traditional 1911 approach is what Staccato took. In 2018, you could get a Staccato P that actually looked basically exactly like this, except for all the sick ass CNC work and the stainless grip. But I'm speaking more on the full size dust cover flush look. I mean, to me, this is the perfect 2011 platform right here. I love having this whole thing just be monolithic and it just, it's, it's a beauty. So on top of the frame, now we're going to go on to the slide. And if you can notice, it's kind of hard to see, but staccatos are a round top. So it's a flat top on the slide itself here, but on the sides, instead of it being like a tri top, obviously that's exactly how that sounds with three sides. This is rounded off on the sides and then flat on the top. 
It's a little bit nicer for press checking with the serrations and stuff like that. And it also goes back to the more tr traditional setups. And Atlas runs a very nice tri-cut, which in my opinion, just looks perfect. Everything Atlas does either is functional or, you know, awesome. <laughs> so uh, on top of that, you move on to the sighting system. So Staccato's run a Dawson Precision plate system where if you run the delta point, you can actually mount this right to the slide, which is nice because you get a full size red dot that mounts onto the slide with no fitting whatsoever. And then they actually will accept the rear sight that will co-witness once you get the Dawson correct size height front sight. And you can get them in uh, with a fiber optic in there. That's usually how the DPO guns come. This was not a DPO. I had it completely customized from an iron sight gun. And because I have the ports in the front, I figured it was kind of stupid to have the fiber optic in the front. So I went with the solid setup. So on the Atlas, what they have is they have their own red dot system. They make their own plates, their own rear sights. And I think they make their front sights. I'm not 100% sure on that. If they don't, I'm sure they probably get them from Dawson Precision. Dawson is pretty sick with his, uh, with his sighting, but I would imagine they probably make their own, being that they make everything else. And what's cool about this plate is this rear sight actually detaches from this plate, which is like how you can see here on my custom gun, there are these three holes where you'll just screw in from the bottom, hold the rear plate on. I don't run iron sights on this gun at all. There's not even a way to put them on. So that is how that plate looks. And this gun is also tri-topped. That's a little bit more of an exaggerated look for you. We even did it to the sight block. All right, so that pretty much takes care of the tops of the guns because we're not really gonna go into the actual uh, CNC work to them. Um, from there, we're gonna ride down to the frames. We already discussed the full size dust cover difference. Now, something that I thought was pretty interesting is Atlas actually has a wider frame in the back here. On the sides, it seems to be the same, but from here to about here, it is wider. It sticks out past the slide. It uh, sits flush with their grip. They have said to me that their grips will not fit on the staccatos. This is not my gun, so I'm not taking this off to try to put it on there. If they are willing to send out another grip in the future, I will absolutely try to fit that on here and see why it will or will not fit. But that is the difference that I have noticed. When you look at them side by side, you can see the top of the grip here on the Atlas and the frame is pushed in where it's flush on this one. So that is a, a pretty cool uh, little detail I never really noticed, honestly, because I never had an Atlas in my hands. The slide stop is extended, but still flush because of this bumped out frame on the Atlas, whereas it's just a little bit smaller on the Staccato. Uh, now moving down, or well, you know what, while we're back here, the Atlases use a high ride thumb safety, which means exactly what it sounds like. When you have your hand here, it actually rides up higher with the gun. You can see this indent in the frame and the grip where a staccato will actually sit in that groove and your thumb will be more bent like this while it's sitting on there instead of like that pointing up. This has Atlas uh, thumb safety, so I'm not able to show you by example with that one. But this is a lot more similar to a staccato, whereas you see how my thumb is sitting like that. Now when I hold the Atlas, it's pointing up. That puts your thumb and your grip a lot higher up in the beaver tail and more aligned with the bore of the gun. 
giving you more accuracy. And like I've said numerous times, this is the most accurate gun I've ever shot. All right, so now um, the thumb safeties are also a lot wider from Atlas, which is why I put them on here. You can get it either wider on the left or right side, depending on which hand you are. They also come in a shielded platform, which looks like this. So as you can see, there is a shield on the back blocking your thumb from riding against the slide. So that is another difference. Atlas does, or Staccato does not give you uh, extended thumb safeties, nor do they give you shielded thumb safeties. Another difference from the grip safety is going to be the Staccatos have a flat back here, whereas the Atlas has a bump out. And then while we're talking about things like this and the grip and frame and everything, what an Atlas is and why it costs so much more than a Staccato in certain instances is that uh, think of an Atlas as a Staccato that a gunsmith put an extra 20 hours into. Uh, I don't exactly know the exact timing. I don't even know if there is an exact time to it, but blending the gun with the beaver tail, with the grip, everything like that, making everything fit completely perfect, like we discussed, the barrel, the front end of the gun, that is all what takes time, and that's where you get a really good gunsmith, and Staccato does it, but they don't do it as well as Atlas does, um, so that is another difference. I do not know what kind of internals at, uh, Staccato uses, but I know that Atlas uses uh, EGW, which is basically top of the line stuff. Uh, there really isn't much else out there unless you go to Infinity, and Infinity makes their own parts, and they have their tracks system, which we will be coming uh, very acquainted with in the very near future. So that basically covers what we have internally and the back top and front of the gun then you come down to the triggers so atlas again has a proprietary trigger not really proprietary it's just their trigger and what that actually does here's a prime example staccato has a curved polymer shoed semi-adjustable trigger shoe whereas atlas has a aluminum fully adjustable trigger where you can even get different sized shoes to fit different hand types and sizes this is a medium and as you can see it is also flat and sticks out a little bit more than what the uh, staccatos um, on top of that they have two blades for adjustments for pre-travel that will help you push these out, it pushes against the frame, pushing the trigger back. Sorry, my cat's walking across the screen. And that will actually give you a shorter trigger pull on the brake. Then the screw in here actually can tighten, press against the mag release button, and that will adjust your reset. So if you want it super short, you push that out all the way, or tighten it in all the way, and you get a better reset. Where you could do the exact same thing on the Staccato, but their shoes are polymer. Nothing wrong with it. Super strong, nice texture on it, but they're polymer. And then you only have one blade on here. And when you really, really dig into them, the Atlas bows are polished a lot more than the Staccatos. Again, showing that whole 20 extra hour thing that Atlas has that Staccato doesn't. Those are the details that make a really nice gun compared to a nice gun. So another thing that I wanted to touch base on, and I hope this comes across well, is Atlas has, they make their own frames. Staccato M makes their own frames as well. And I've never been to Staccato, I've never been to Atlas, but I have heard Adam from Atlas 
uh, you can go on their website and learn a ton of stuff from their YouTube channel. Adam is a great instructor. And what I've learned from them is to get these perfect triggers that Atlas has, they have machines that when they make their frames, they drill these holes perfect. The holes for the disconnector and sear and thumb safeties are all perfectly aligned because if you have the sear shelf and then you have the hammer and the holes are crooked, the sear shelf might sit like this instead of like that. And now you have to make the actual shelf uneven so that it will sit flat, giving you that perfect uh, uniformity to be able to get that awesome trigger because that is how you achieve it is through sheer perfectness so they put a lot of time into just getting those holes straight and again that is the extra cost from this gun to this gun i'm not saying that these holes are are not straight but i'm saying that i know these holes are straight so that pretty much sums up the differences in that area um a couple little details are going to be that the uh let's see the grips from an atlas are basically all i believe stainless steel or aluminum uh like i said before they claim that they do not fit the staccato but we will test that in a future video once i have my own grip uh, their magwells are a little bit different in size this is more of a concealed version uh, and this is I mean, this is a concealed version as well, so it's just smaller. And uh, that's really about it, except for the fact that um, an Atlas is awesome and stupid accurate. Uh, one cool thing was this gun comes with, I believe, a 12-pound recoil spring, and this gun comes with something like an 11, 11 or or nine pound recoil spring. I have a six or seven pound recoil spring with a few coils cut off of it. And then I have a blue Dawson Precision buffer. Uh, other than that though, that's the setups from the two. I hope this helps. Uh, there are a lot more things that I'm overlooking. I will try to come back at a later date and give you a little bit more. If you want to know anything else, let me know. I only have this gun for a few more days, so make it quick. But um, yeah, uh, that is the difference between an Atlas and a Staccato. We will be doing a competition with these two guns and we're even gonna toss this guy in there as well because why the hell not? So stay tuned, that will most likely be the next video. I wanna thank everyone, we hit a milestone 2,000 subscribers. Guys, thank you so much. Um, super excited to do this stuff for you. We are getting somewhere. I mean, we have a $6,000 gun sitting in front of us, so I couldn't do this without you guys. Um, other than that, I want everybody to stay safe. Remember, believe and achieve, and we'll check you later.